Hello fellow unicorns, my name is Mina and I'm a professional manga teacher and the author of the Manga Crash Course book. At the end of this video I will link my previous video regarding inking manga. In the manga making process the next step after inking is applying screen tone. So today we will be learning all about applying screen tone. For applying screen tone you will need two things. You will need a screen tone foil and a scalpel. Please be careful while working with this because you can punch a hole through the paper, th through the foil uh, and of course through your own skin if you're not careful enough. Please be careful and practice caution while working with sharp objects and scalpels. It happens to the best of us so if you're younger I suggest having a family companion that's older to help you with this. And as you can see, the screen tone foil comes in two layers. There's a piece of paper I will be talking about later and there is the see-through foil. And this see-through foil comes in very different variations, many different brands from Japan. And as you can see, it's see-through because then you can um, measure approximately how much foil you will need to cover up this particular part of the drawing or the illustration or the manga panel. Usually screen tone is the gray area you see in most manga comics and panels because artists tend to make the black and white manga as enjoyable as possible by making a black area white area and gray area on the paper and as you can see I'm cutting out carefully slices of the foil and turning them back to the paper where it came from because this foil is actually sticky but not too sticky that's why I am able to apply and reapply and position and reposition it as many times as I want. Uh, there is a reason for this and I will explain it more into detail later on. And also there is a main reason why I'm returning this foil back to its paper because it's very expensive, it's hard to find and it's reusable. So that you can use these tiny bits just like I'm using here to actually double layer your shadows, to double layer the parts of this gray area so that it can look even more detailed and interesting to the eye. And there is a lot of silly rules, well personally to me they are silly, but they are very important in the Japanese society and manga art. And uh, there is this rule where you do all the manga panels by hand. Um, I personally, when I need to draw a manga panel or do some uh, shading this way, I'm just using digital screen tones or making my own in Photoshop. The reason why I'm doing this is because it's way less costly to order this from Japan because you won't find screen tone foils anywhere in your local art stores if you do consider yourself lucky because you can rarely find these anywhere outside of Japan. And in Japan there are many different brands, there are many different looks, there are pre-printed and non-printed foils you can use so you can uh, even print on your own textures on it. For example you can print out lace or uh, any type of background photo even to just apply an entire scenery behind your character just print it on the foil and then sticking it on your manga panel. This is a trick a lot of professional manga artists and assistants use to save up on time. So it's re really um, kind of a sneaky trick but still they do it and they do it very successfully. And as you can see I am applying several coats and of course the main rule with uh, applying screen tone is to be careful on not to cut out uh, too small of a piece because it's better to cut out a big piece and apply it than cut around the edges than to cut out a very small piece that won't fit the area you want it to cover. 
currently I'm using a scratching method to um, make some of the white details white again and I'm literally scratching off the layer of foil over some tiny white bits like these petals or some other details um, this is also done under a strict set of rules in Japan. I am currently disregarding rules because in practical sense it's my duty as a teacher to tell you how to get all of these effects without actually buying or using screen tone. But of course, if you want to use screen tone and you want to use it the true Japanese way, the main trick to screen tone is to line up all of the tiny dots in the screen tone on the strict 25 degree um, angle, first of all. Then you need to follow strict set of rules to um, uh, cover the next layer of the screen tone, which I'm not currently using because I currently don't think that it's that important since the downsizing comes into play in every manga uh, procedure. So all of this will be shrunken down to a very small picture and you won't be able to see the uh, alignment of the dots in the screen tone. I'm using the double layering on the tassels and on some other details. I'll be using a little bit on the face as well. And to be perfectly honest, uh, screen tone is a very old fashioned and very expensive tool. Uh, it requires a lot of nerves, a lot of time. You will get very sticky and you won't be able to finish a big project or a comic book as fast as you would if you just scanned your line art and added your screen tones digitally. As for the other part of the paper I was mentioning earlier, you probably saw me using uh, paper to cover the entire drawing and then use a ruler to flatten it out. This is the pr part of the process you use to finalize the stickiness of the screen tone. The screen tone itself is not as sticky as um, it should be to permanently stay on. This is done with a very good reason because when it's not very sticky you can reposition it and you can reapply it as many times as you like. But on the point when you're very satisfied with your work and when you're satisfied with the final design and the final placement of the screen tone, then you use the piece of paper, regular one or the one you got with the screen tone, and you put it over the work, then use something that's flat, like a ruler. Uh, in Japan you have actually certain tools that are literally made for this but I think that's a useless waste of money when you have just a simple ruler you can use to press down on your work and finalize the stickiness of the screen tone so that it doesn't like unstick or move or fall off the drawing. Visually, it's more impressive to have most of the artwork in white surfaces than around maybe 10 to 20, maybe 30% of black surfaces and just about 15% gray surfaces. Of course, it's all up to personal taste. Taste is always individual, but usually from my experience and from every manga panel you can take and observe, you will be able to see how, mu uh, how much screen tone uh, mangaka uses. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and if you want to learn how to draw manga, check out my book Manga Crash Course available in English, French, Serbian and Chinese.